All right, so today I'm walking around, checking on a few things. Still are on uh, a stretch of warm days. And today I am going to be still kind of vlogging a little bit. So this will be all just kind of shot on the iPhone, maybe a little bit on the GoPro. Um, and this is just gonna be some kind of just normal day stuff. Right now, just checking on the Aquascape Pond, seeing who's moving around, see if we have anybody basking. Ooh, there you go. Awesome. Razorback musk turtle moving around in December. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, and I see an alligator snapping turtle down there. So even these guys have been moving around. It's been in like the 70s. Like right now it's 75. So I'm pretty stoked on this. Let's see if we can get a glimpse of this guy. I'll have to stick the phone in the water. But yeah, right there. Lloyd Christmas hanging out. Oh look, and there's a cooter. <laughs> I didn't even see him. That's awesome. These guys can actually hide really, really well in here. And um, they, they're just kind of wedging in here. And uh, the alligator snappers really like this spot because uh, right there is where the crayfish can actually go under that rock and run along the edge of it. So the alligator snappers will actually stick themselves right there in the way uh, where those crayfish move. And then they'll just ambush them and get a little snack. So it's, it's been warm enough that they've actually been hungry and been kind of sitting in the I've been just kind of hanging out and basking, but uh, probably eating some of this algae and vegetation a little bit as well. Uh, as long as it's warm enough, they can digest a little bit, so that's good. What's up, Razorback? Man, that is cool. I love these guys. Such awesome musk turtles. Really easy to care for. They get a lot bigger than all our other native musk turtles. Uh, I've seen them as big as seven inches, um, but just really awesome and does really good in this aquascape pond. Well, that's cool, man. That makes my day. Like, actually, a really really nice day today all right let's see this is the mountain tortoise who is inside its hide all the way back there in the back so that's pretty cool what's up dude what you eating see how close i can get be the squirrel master a good looking squirrel all right man Oh, this is cool. Look at that pretty Gulf Coast box turtle. And she has just come out of her little spot that she was hiding in. She's sitting out at the base of this uh, kind of pathetic looking elephant ear. It's like, why does, why does this one look so bad? And then this one actually looks good. <laughs> They're both the same kind. But you can see uh, what, where she came out of. And when box turtles make that, that's called a form, F-O-R-M. And that's just like their little shallow burrow that they like to make. But she's clearly annoyed with me, so I'm gonna leave her alone and let her keep on keeping on. But really cool to see her out here moving around. This unseasonably warm weather has just been amazing. Uh, I, I have a feeling that it's a lot like this, you know, out in the field as well. So if I were to go to a river or a pond or a swamp or something like that, I'd probably see a whole lot of basking turtles and turtle activity. So that's pretty cool. All right, so one of the other things I'm doing today is letting my snakes get a little bit of enrichment, get outside. Um, as of right now, I wanna get these guys some display tanks or like really cool display setups. Right now they're in tubs. So what I do is a few times a week, I get them outside and I let them, you know, get some moving around. If it's cold, they don't go outside, but they get to like, you know, come out and do some handling and this makes them, you know, really, um, you know, just used to people. But yeah, I like to let them get some exercise you know move through some grass and get to be you know happy snakes um you know another thing is is i like to use my snakes in education and let them you know kind of help ease people's fears and misconceptions about snakes um, and so i like to bring them out and let people handle them and interact with them so for me to be able to do that i have to work with them a lot myself you know this way they stay like nice and calm and they're kind of used to any situation that i put them in when somebody's handling them but um, just absolutely beautiful snakes. I really like the Kankakees a lot because they start off at this kind of black and white at the front and then the midsection is kind of a brown or reddish and white and then the tail is more of a like black and yellow high contrast. So they're really beautiful snakes. Kind of look like three snakes put together. And uh, if I was ever to breed any snakes, these would be the ones. I, I just think they're gorgeous. These guys are also rodent specialists and uh, they have an adapted scale on the end of their nose and that helps them go down rodent burrows and dig out you know, dirt to basically do what he's doing right there. They like to dig. 
So they're gonna use that rostral scale on the nose to dig a burrow, and they use that to also find rodents. So pretty neat. It's awesome, especially when I get to let them outside and let them do what they like naturally would do. And you know, it's fun for them too. They like to be able to investigate things. Yeah, as you can see, just a beautiful snake. Not aggressive or anything, really. I mean, sometimes they're a little defensive or a little uh, hungry when you first open the uh, setup. But other than that, really awesome animal. I love these guys. Beautiful, beautiful snakes. So we're gonna let this guy move around for a little bit more. And then we'll bring out the other snake. And then maybe we'll bring out Fred, the uh, rock iguana. This is also a uh, hybrid pine snake. So this is a Florida pine crossed with a black pine. And you can see the black pine influence creating uh, that solid black on the front of the body. Um, but this one was donated as part of my educational program. And pine snakes are actually losing a lot of that longleaf pine and um, kind of open canopy habitat throughout their range. And you know, they range all the way from New Jersey down to Florida. And there's also the Louisiana pine in Louisiana and East Texas, and the black pine in the Panhandle of Florida, Southern Alabama and Mississippi. And you know, these are beautiful snakes. They're really, really big snakes. This one's actually only a year old and almost four feet. And they're, you know, a, just an interesting, you know, kind of East Coast version of the bull snake. You can see that rostral scale on the nose right there. And these guys are really heavy bodied and they get, you know, some of them up to seven or eight feet. More typically, you're gonna see six feet as about a normal maximum size for a wild one. But in captivity, uh, these snakes are pretty well known for getting really, really big, uh, but really awesome snakes. Again, just like the bull snake, these guys are a rodent specialist and one of their favorites in the southern states is pocket gophers. And they'll go down into a pocket gopher burrow and eat pretty much the entire family of pocket gophers if given the chance. And this snake has been just really awesome to, to kind of get to work with and keep and um, looking forward to using it in educational shows and um, being able to share it with everybody. So love these guys. really like to let my snakes have the opportunity to be curious and check things out. <laughs> right now he's definitely checking out the phone and pretty fascinated by that but you know this is you know I think a big part of owning reptiles is giving them you know kind of the most um, you know everybody always says the word enrichment and I think that's a, it's a good word I just I hate to keep saying it but you know, give them the opportunity to, to investigate things and, and check out new things and not just be in a cage their entire life or in a tub their entire life and let them you know, have some experiences and some kind of real world experience out in nature. And uh, that's what I like to do. And, it, and it's cool to be able to see you know, really interesting behaviors out of these guys. All right, so. I'm going to be careful since I have him outside, but this is Fred. He's my rock iguana. Uh, I was given him from Fred Grunwald. Um, and I, I just couldn't help but name him Fred um, just because what a great name for a rock iguana. And you can see he's really pretty. He's really defensive. These guys are still just so jumpy when they're young, but you know, I'm trying to work with him and get him used to people, but uh, it takes a little while. Sometimes I have to like bargain with, you know, fruit and things like blueberries, bananas, uh, different greens. Um, but once he, he, once you get him out of the cage, he actually stays pretty calm and I'm really looking forward to seeing this guy grow. As you can see, he's, you know, a little over a foot, but, um, just a beautiful animal. I really like the rock iguanas when I was considering adding a lizard to, you know, my collection of things that I keep. Um, I really wanted something that would be calm and something that I could interact with. And I, after, you know, hanging around the ones that, uh, Kenan's place and Fred's place and just seeing how calm they are and the fact that you can just kind of walk up to them and feed them and pet them 
and the way that they even sometimes will come seek out attention. I just thought that was really awesome and very dog-like. And so hopefully Fred over time will get used to me. Now he's pretty locked on to the phone, but um, really looking forward to watching this guy grow. And yeah, so I don't know if everybody's had a real good formal introduction to Fred, but this is Fred. All right, so another thing I need to do today is clean out this tub that has some uh, baby musk turtles in it. You can see there's a baby stink pot, there's baby loggerheads. Uh, these are all guys that hatched uh, over in the pond and I've just kind of been raising them up, but it's time to change their water out. I think we're gonna add some plants this time around. Uh, this last uh, water change I did like basically Christmas day before I went to visit with my family. So uh, I like to give these guys some plants and some of the little microorganisms that are kind of hanging out in there, like little bugs and snails and stuff that they can eat on. So we're gonna change their water out and put some of that stuff in there. This will give you an idea how tiny these guys are. And these guys actually hatched out months ago and have had you know, some pretty good amount of growth going on and they're still just so freaking tiny. Um, mu baby musk turtles are just like some of the smallest turtles. And uh, I love their little eyes too, just peeking out from under the shell. They're, all, they're the best. Check out the difference between the uh, plastron of the stink pot on the right and the loggerhead on the left. That's pretty cool, totally different. All right, so got this tub set up with some plants, uh, lots of long aquatic plant roots in there for them to hide in and climb on. Uh, this is a, just a much better setup for them than, than a plain empty tub. And so pretty stoked on that. These guys are gonna have fun in here. I'm gonna go add some, you know, little snails and stuff in addition to some of the diet that I feed them, the uh, Missouri, or sorry, in addition to the diet that I feed them, the Zoomed musk turtle diet, uh, dried krill, uh, little tiny snails and little pieces of shrimp, you know, all kinds of little things are, you know, great for these guys. So pretty stoked on that. And you know what? I feel like that's a pretty good spot to end this video. So thank you guys so much for watching this random vlog of just randomness. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Peace.